You know, I'm really excited to be here today, and um, I've got a number of issues that I want to talk about, but, you know, when you're the governor, you got to keep focused on the most important issues. I want to thank Regent Claire for being here today because together we've done some great things uh, here lately. Think about this. When is the last time in March, as spring football began, that we were still talking about basketball? <laughs> I don't ever recall that. And look at what's happening with the Lady Huskers, Creighton, and the Huskers. I mean, the Lady Huskers, Connie Yori, and just done a great job. Jordan Hooper, Emily, Katie, and all the, all the kids. They just won the Big Ten tournament. It was really neat, cool. When they walked in Sunday night, coming from the airport into the Wisconsin game, we were already standing. But, you know, we gave them a standing ovation. And let me just tell you, this is a team that can go deep in the NCAA tournament. And in fact, if they win their first two games, the next two are right here in Lincoln. If they win both of those, they'd be in the final four. So we can dream a little bit here. I think there's a, hopefully a possibility uh, of what could happen. And then you look at Creighton, you know, Doug McDermott's going to be the uh, player of the year. If Creighton could play Villanova every night, just think what would happen. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable what they've done. And then the Huskers. We've got this 47-year-old teenager as a, as a basketball coach now. And let me tell you, Tim Miles is doing a fantastic job. Uh, the kids love him. The state uh, loves him. Uh, you know, it's a good thing he's not running for governor. Or he'd get elected. Uh, but just to hear him talk, if you didn't see it after the game the other night, which was absolutely incredible. The whole game we stood, every fan, uh, as long as you could, the intensity of that whole game. But after the game, if you saw his interview, he was talking to those kids. Hey, we're not done yet. We got a long ways to go. He set the bar very, very high. And uh, what he's been able to accomplish in, in just a couple of years and, and the excitement it's brought to Lincoln and across the state really is, is something very, very special. And hey, we just got to keep winning and, and, and it's really fun to watch. And uh, again, you know, the Wisconsin game, you know, even the other players, if you listen to some of their comments, they thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to play in an unbelievable atmosphere, the intensity of the entire game. They've never seen that before. And even though they lost, I think they were thinking, well, we want our fans to do that. So I wanted to give you an update on one of the most important issues first. Now, let me talk about football too, you know, because <laughs> Saturday night I ran into Kenny Bell and Amir Abdullah and they were telling me, man, Governor, you know how good the defense was last year? They're going to be even better this year. And uh, they were telling me what uh, practice was really like. Now, that's a tribute to Tim Clare. He's responsible for the defense this year. He told me they're not going to score a single touchdown on the Huskers this year. So, Tim, thank you very much for that commitment. But uh, in all of these, if I could for just a moment, when you think about these young men and women, and we do it at a number of schools, uh, across state, Wesley and, and all the rest, you know, they're proud to represent their university, their team, and, uh, you know, we were commenting at our table, knock on wood, but when's the last time you heard a Husker get in trouble? These are good kids. They're proud to represent the university, proud to represent our state, and they're proud of the fans and the way in which we cheer for them. We're pro-Huskers, pro-Lady Huskers, pro-Creighton, pro Wesleyan pro all the other uh, schools uh, in this state. And so I just want you to know, it makes a difference to those kids. And they really do appreciate it when uh, we come up and talk to them and, and, and thank them for it. And, and in our state, particularly, uh, you know, the University of Nebraska, uh, you get a scrutiny that you don't necessarily get if you're going to college, say out in California or New York or some other place. Here, you're on the front page for a wide variety of reasons, and, and by and large, in our case, it's for all the right reasons. And so, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to interact uh, with these young men and women and, and what they do. And I was mentioning at the table, uh, Jordan Hooper, 
I've been governor long enough. I've seen her play through high school at the state tournament several times, and then four years at the university, she just gets better and better and better. And this is a very humble uh, young lady who ever some, ever some, every summer goes back to her family farm in Alliance and works on that farm. She talks about what it was like this last summer and the opportunity to compete for the United States of America. A young girl from Alliance, Nebraska. Um, Jordan Larson could tell you the same story growing up in Hooper and, and what she's been able to accomplish with the, the volleyball uh, team. So we're really proud of these uh, individuals. And, and let me just say that I, I wanted to focus on two issues today for you education and jobs and put this in perspective uh, certainly what it's been all about for me as governor and what it needs to continue to be is to give every young person in this state the very best education we can give them and we do a great job in this state public and private k-12 the university system the community college system but that's crucial and then to create jobs so that we can keep these young kids here and so we've really tried to put a focus. I want to talk a little bit about education for a moment, particularly as we talk about uh, K-12. We've tried to talk to the schools about academic achievement and academic improvement. And five years ago, we worked with the legislature and we went to statewide assessments. So now every kid, grade three through eight and 11th grade, they're all taking the same reading, math, science, writing test, and we now can compare and hopefully learn from those comparisons, share the success stories all across the state. So on one hand, it's academic excellence. The other hand, it's all about improvement. And I wanna share with you some of the results because we've been doing it for a number of years now. This past year was the third year, or, or on science, it was the second year of the test, okay? Second year of the science test, and, and I go out, superintendents love me for this, but I take all those scores and I put them uh, by sports classification, A, B, C, 1, C, 2, smaller schools. I don't think it's fair to compare a Lincoln School, for example, to Dundee County out in, in the western part of the state. So I give the comparisons in each one of these categories uh, by sports classification. Well, last year was the second year of the science test. 24 of the 26 Class A schools that we rated did better. 23 of the 28 Class B schools improved. 28 of the 39 C1, 29 of the 41 C2s, and 39 of the 59 smaller schools all improved their scores on the science test last year. Last year in Class A, and this doesn't happen very often, Lincoln East scored first in reading, math, and science. One high school, first in every category. Remarkable achievement. And then we also talk about academic improvement because while we're proud of the schools that maybe start at a 95 score, we also want to recognize them, those that may start at 40 and they go to 60 and recognize that improvement. We've been doing the reading test for four years now. Seven schools every single year improved their reading score. Elkhorn South, Fairbury, Milford, O'Neill, Battle Creek, Creighton, and Elm Creek. And that gets tougher and tougher every year, no matter where you started at, to think you can continue to improve it. And those seven schools did. Math, we've been doing it for three years now, and we knew we had a challenge in math. That, you know, maybe we'd relax the, the criterion. And so I just want to talk about Class A and, and Class B for a moment. The schools I'm going to mention, they've improved their math score every single year. In Class A, Fremont, Grand Island, Lincoln Northeast, Millard South, Omaha Benson, Bryan, Burke, Central North, Northwest, and Papillion La Vista South. Every single year. In Class B, Alliance, Gearing, Grand Island Northwest, Holdridge, Lexington, McCook, Ralston, Schuyler, and Scotts Bluff. Every single year, our scores are getting better. Then look at our, our graduation rate. We have the second, high, second highest high school graduation rate in America at 88.5%, and our goal is to get every high school in this state at 
We'll get the state there before we get every high school. But last year, we've got 249 school districts, but there are about 56 uh, school districts that have a small population in high school, and for privacy reasons, we can't rate those. So of the 193 school districts that we could look at, and they have enough kids in high school that we could rate, 72 percent, 139 schools in our state already are graduating more than 90 percent of their kids. And if you look at our class A and class B schools, uh, a good share of them are all above 85 percent. We're headed in the right direction and we're like I say, we're trying to get to 90 percent. I mean, th th there are states out there that are sitting at 60 or 65. Here we're sitting at 88 and a half. We're not quite satisfied. We, we want to get to 90. So whenever you want to talk about the schools in this state in the big picture, there's no doubt in my mind, public and private, we do a very good job. We can make uh, continued improvements and continue to go forward. You know what some of the things, I saw Steve Joel over there and what Lincoln's trying to do and I commend him for that. But the challenge is we want these kids to get better every year. We don't do them any favors if we don't have high expectations. We have kids to perform at this level, they will. If you ask them down here, that's where you'll end up. And we expect uh, the very best out of our kids, whether we're talking about academics, athletics, or extracurricular activities. And so I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, and then the key, every kid now needs some education beyond high school. For some, it's, it's a two-year community or a technical college. That's the career they want to pursue. For others, it's a four-year degree. So whatever makes sense for those uh, individual students, but they definitely need education beyond high school. That's one half of the equation. Get them prepared. Make sure that every single young person in this state has the opportunity for that quality education, no matter what your background, black or white, rich or poor, and that's the job we're doing in Nebraska. So then the job, after we've done that, we want to keep these young people here in the state of Nebraska. So then it's all about jobs and how do we do it, and there are a number of things. But I want to share a couple of uh, things in, in, that, in that regard. In the last couple of weeks, Nebraska became the number one cattle feeding state in all of America, surpassing the great state of Texas. And, and, and let me tell you a little bit of what that's all about, okay? Because I haven't talked to Governor Perry of Texas, just to make sure he knew that we were passing him up, and he was very, very gracious. But we have this golden triangle, corn, ethanol, cattle. And we've all been working together for the last uh, decade or more to continue to enhance value-added agriculture with what we've been able to do. That's what the ethanol in industry is all about and the byproducts that they are using for the cattle industry and for a variety of other reasons. We've just kept moving forward and forward and now we're the number one cattle feeding uh, in, uh, state in America. Also, when you talk about agriculture day, I want us all to realize it's not the agriculture of 20 years ago. 20 years ago, it was what happened on the individual farm and ranch. Today, it's that and much more. It's value-added agriculture in terms of alternative energy, the biosciences, it, what goes on in the food processing industry that goes on in Omaha and Lincoln every bit as much as it goes on in rural Nebraska. And so this agriculture industry is very, very important to the state of Nebraska and, and where we're headed and what we're doing and, and our opportunity. Then the other thing I wanted to bring to your attention, which is a first, I got this new uh, Governor's Cup I want to talk about. I get to sleep with this now. <laughs> Every year, Site Selection Magazine, for the last three or four years, has ranked all 50 states relative to economic development and the projects you're creating. More than a million dollars investment, 50 jobs. And it's always been about the number of projects, so that means the big states are always going to win. Texas, uh, for example. This year, Site Selection Magazine said not only we're going to do a Governor's Cup for the most projects, we're going to do it on a per capita basis. And this cup represents Nebraska being number one. We came out on top. <laughs> now, 
you think about it and I want to say thank you to this chamber the chambers the business leaders all across this state on a per capita basis there's no state in America doing a better job than we are and that's a tribute to this great team that we have who understands how much and how much we want to do relative to job creation to keep these young people here so not only did we win it as a state for its category size of city, Omaha came in first. South Sioux City and Sioux City, Nebraska, their uh, metropolitan area, if you want to call it that, came in number one too. And so again, and you know what's going on in Lincoln, I don't need to tell you. I mean, this city, its vibrancy and, and, and what's happening that all of you have been a, a part of the last four or five years, uh, the number of construction projects, Pinnacle Bank Arena, and all the rest, uh, you should be very, very proud. And, that, and that's why we got this trophy. And so I, I wanted to share that with you today, that we, we try to keep this focus on the big picture. Education and jobs, they're interrelated. And we gotta continue to move forward. And, and I'm proud in our state that we value both. I, I really don't know a single Nebraskan who doesn't appreciate, doesn't understand, and recognize the importance of getting their son or daughter the very best education we can give them. Because they know that's the future. That's the opportunity then to a good job. And we've kept that focus, thanks to so many people in this state, on job creation. And we just gotta keep moving forward and forward and forward, and I believe we can do it. So I wanted to come here today, uh, just share that with you say thank you for all you've done for the state, and um, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Basketball, football, or jobs? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Or yes, sir. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you know, we've gone on 12 different uh, trade missions. We've had two reverse trade missions where we've brought uh, now over 500 uh, business and government leaders from all over the world to Nebraska. And uh, I want to thank the university. They've been a great part of this. Uh, depending whether you want to talk about agriculture, transportation, education, whatever, we've worked with the business community and the university here in Lincoln in particular to give them that opportunity. So uh, my criterion basically for going on a, a trade mission, I, I've taken a little different approach than previous governors. I pretty well tell the, the wherever we're going to go, uh, we're going to sign a deal while I'm there, I'm not coming. So we put the bar pretty high that if we're going to go there, we want the opportunity to promote our state, to sign a deal. Um, recently, um, I had a Nebraskan who was down in Cuba for some reason, and they came up to me and said, man, Governor, how come your picture is on the wall of the National Hotel in Cuba? And I said, because we had the guts to go down there and cut a deal with Fidel Castro. And it's a really true story, and I won't get into it, but we've gone everywhere from Cuba to China, and I'm ready to go anywhere in America, anywhere in the world, to promote Nebraska products. The business community has been very, very supportive. Um, if we have the opportunity, we'll do one more between now and the end of my term. I'm just not sure where yet. I think someone back here had a quick Nick. Yeah, I think you know well enough you know I don't mind putting you on the spot. That's okay. What's next for Dave Hyman? Um if Tim Clare approves this, I'm gonna be the head football coach in the internet. <laughs> You know, Nick, I, I don't know. I get asked this question all the time, and, and, and I, I'd share two things with you. Right now, I, I'm really focused uh, on the job as governor because it's 24-7, and we still have a lot to do. And I remember my dad always told me, you just do the job you have right now, and the rest will take care of itself, and that's pretty much been true. The other issue that I think you've got to be mindful as governor that I certainly am, uh, depending on what I might do after this, I want to be very, very careful that I don't put myself in a conflict of interest in the last 90 or 120 days that maybe you're going on some corporate board or something else, and all of a sudden that company has a regulatory issue in front of the state of Nebraska. Revenue, department, environmental quality, insurance, finance, whatever. Uh, my integrity is not for sale. So I'm going to really, by and large, probably worry about that after the fact. Um, but I'm having too much fun right now. I, 
my dream right now, I know this maybe won't come true, but I hope it does. NCAA, Final Four, Final Two, Nebraska versus Creighton. <laughs> hey, you got a dream. Got a dream. Uh, uh, I, 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 I got asked that question this morning, and I said, I'd be wearing red and blue. <laughs> Uh, what else you want to know? I, I, if someone's in front here, I can't see because this governor's coming. <laughs> Wendy. Well, Wendy asked about the legislature, and in particular, I think she, you know, what are we trying to do? The one area, if we're going to continue to move forward, in my opinion, as a state, uh, uh, is to reduce the tax burden. That will make us more uh, competitive for higher paying jobs of the future, and that's why I focused on that. But I don't want to lose sight of the fact we've already passed the largest tax relief package in the history of the state a few years back. Several times we've passed additional uh, uh, tax relief legislation. But I guess the biggest challenge right now, or disappointment, uh, if you look at the budget they're proposing, it includes $136 million of new spending and $25 million of tax relief. So five times as much new spending compared to tax relief. I believe that's out of balance. We're going to continue to talk to them about that. Uh, I also think that we're going to have the opportunity uh, in the session even yet. Uh, we may not get the income tax rates down, but I think we're going to get indexing uh, so that you're, because of inflation, you're not automatically in, uh, knocked into uh, or kept in a higher bracket. So that'll be good news and some other issues. But long term, you've got to address the income tax situation. I, I'll just share with you, uh, Wendy knows about it because she's been in the room. Uh, we're out there trying to help local businesses expand, create higher paying jobs in that sixty dollars to $120,000 arena or trying to recruit a new company to come to Nebraska uh, to pay higher paying jobs. We go through the pitch. Great workforce, great work ethic, great education system, best quality of life in all of America. We've got them 99% convinced they're going to come to Nebraska and then they ask one final question. Well, Governor, What's the income tax rate in your state if we're going to bring these higher paying jobs? Well, sir, ma'am, I'm really proud to tell you it's one of the highest in America at 6.84%. And they look at me and say, you know, we could go to another state that's 0, 1, 2, or 3. This is about our future. This is not about lowering taxes for the sake of lowering taxes. This is about lowering taxes so we can keep our young people here with higher paying jobs. This is a, an issue for the next 25 to 50 years. We've got to address it. It's not easy, okay? Uh, we've made a lot of progress. We have more progress to do. And so, you know, we just got to keep the heat on every year that keep making progress on the property tax and income tax up front to make us more competitive to grow this state. I mean, we have everything else. I mean, we have the best people. I mean, you're amazing. Uh, I get to see it every day, what we do for each other in terms of the generosity and kindness uh, uh, every single day, how much we care about each other. And, you know, this is true even in Lincoln, but, you know, I tell people all the time, when you're growing up in Nebraska, whether you're in Lincoln or a small town, if you do something wrong during the day, your parents are going to know about it before uh, you get home that night. Now... You know, I knew I was going to be governor, so I never did anything wrong when I was young, just so you know. <laughs> but think about what that says about us, how much we care about each other, how much we love each other, and how much we support each other. And, and it happens every single day. Last fall, first Friday in October, we had a blizzard and shattering, a tornado in Wayne, all on the same day. Four farm families in Wayne lost their home. Their neighbors came to them immediately and said, you can live with us for however long it takes to rebuild your home. We didn't dial 1-800 federal government for help. We do it because we care about each other, friends, neighbors, all the rest. So, hey, I'm, I'm really proud of our state, but the one area we still need to make progress is the tax front. I can maybe do one more question. 
Or if not, I'm going to turn you back over to this cool, cool guy, Rich Clausen. Thank you very much.